Thank you, Hugo, for inviting me and to introduce me. Thank you for all the um, organiza uh, organizers of the conference. It's a very pleasure for me to stay here. And uh, sorry, because uh, my vision is uh, quite different from you, probably. Um, I'm a product designer, uh, as uh, Hugo said before. But uh, since the beginning, I, I work with, uh, got, with um, biomedical engineers. And then I have, uh, I have a, um, probably different perspective about uh, your work. But I think uh, I'm convinced that we can collaborate and we can uh, make it better together. Then, uh, thanks to my teaser in the first day of the conference, uh, many people continue to ask me about the <laughs> high heel <laughs> shoes. <laughs> and uh, the question was, why, if everybody knows that from the biomedical point of view, from the, from the biomechanics point of view, use uh, high heel uh, shoes, it's a completely uh, disaster. Then, probably, probably, we will uh, find some uh, answer to, to this question. But before, I want to say something. In the, as Hugo said before, in the last year, I started to work in the Venice University. Uh, you know, Venice is a very special city. Many people come to Venice to visit. It's one of the most visited places in the world. And uh, most of these people as uh, high incoming, um, I mean, people who have not many problems of, of money. Uh, then the cost of the life in Venice is very high. And uh, every day when I go to, to work, I uh, cross um, San Marcos Square. And then after San Marcos Square, there is a street full of shops, of stores of the best brands, Italian brands of uh, fashion. One of these brands is uh, Swarovski. Um, and uh, I usually take pictures of the, of the windows because I continue to get impressed about the, the, the price of the products. And then you can see here, sorry for the, for the picture, it was taken with the mobile phone to the windows uh, just before to take the flight to, to come here. And then it's very, very updated uh, price if you are planning to, to buy it. But you can see here, you can see here a bag and uh, uh, the shoes, and the price is 1,400 euros and uh, 1,700 euros for the, for the bag. Then, this uh, pushed me to think about how can I explain or try to explain to biomedical uh, engineers what is happening here? Why people decide to pay, to pay this money for uh, a completely uncomfortable shoes. Then, it's interesting also to know that only in USA, each year, people sp spend $8 billion in shoes, in fashion uh, shoes. $8 billion. I think we need to think about this, but sorry for this draw because I, I made it during the, the last uh, keynote speaker speaking presentation, because I think in this way could be useful, um, is more, more is easier to explain which, as, which is our, our capability as designer. Then, if you can imagine a situation like this, could be a table or not, it's a, just a representation. You can see in the upper side superficial and white knowledge that probably represent the designer's knowledge. And then you have this kind of legs that could be deeper and specific knowledge that probably could represent the knowledge of more of you that are very, very um, specific in, in, some, in some issues. You know, you, you have a um, field of research that are completely, in some cases, under, uh, impossible to understand to me. I have not the, the, the knowledge to arrive to the, 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 
the deeper of your knowledge. But I think that my opportunity is to connect this different specific knowledge and to try to uh, find new opportunities to collaborate in, in a multidisciplinary way. There is also another point that probably you miss sometimes, which is the difference in between cost, price, price and value. Then this is for us uh, one of the most important concepts in product design. Because the cost is how much it costs to produce a chair. The price is how much this chair will be uh, offered to the market. It depends on the, um, of the um, marketing process and depends on the, of the people who is interested in a chair. But a different um, concept is the value. The value is which is the, the value that the consumer give to this chair. Then it's not possible to, to manage directly from the industry because it's the, the last user that decides which is the value of this. Just to, to give an example, if we consider a Vespa, a motorbike, you know, uh, at this moment the Vespa has a big value People want to have an old Vespa. Many people. I'm, I, I am one of these. But if you consider the price of the Vespa, uh, it's completely outside of the market. Because you pay a, a Vespa, like an old Vespa, like an um, actual uh, car. Then it's, people is, is um, want to pay this money for a Vespa, which is not related with the real cost of this product. Then, if you can give add value to your product, to your uh, projects, then people will be very happy to pay this price and will be a, a success project. On the other hand, if people pay a price for a solution, and the result is not like they want, the value is very low, and then it's a failure. Then, for us, for designers, the scope of our work is to, to reduce cost and, high, and, and, and give value to the project. Okay, this is a very, um, let's say, general assumption just to to guide you uh, to the, the next uh, slide. What I want to do in this presentation is show you some examples of my work in the field of bioengineering with, my, with the, the team in which I, I have used to work in the past. And uh, the last, in, in the last uh, slides, I will present you some of the project that we are doing now in the university with the design students. That more, uh, some of them are very related with the, the, the project that I saw in, in, in your presentations. Then, let me start with this, this project here. This project was called Easy Fridge and was a uh, found project by uh, an industry, an Italian industry called Indesit, who produce uh, consumer products, uh, refrigerators, dishwashing machines, uh, and so on. Then, the interior process was related with um, then the goal of the of the project was to improve from the uh, ergonomics point of view the interaction with the fridge. In order to do this, we uh, performed before this some uh, ethnographical observations in uh, real users, mainly users with disability or elderly people. Then after we involved them in a, in a participatory workshop, including people from the company, then the people from the marketing and, and the um, people from the production line. And uh, all together, this decide a, a new concept of a refrigerator. Then from the concept, it was a phase of uh, development, then a phase of uh, prototyping. 
before to finish with the last prototyping, with the last prototype, we performed some uh, measurements with the uh, Bicon, with the uh, optoelectronics uh, technology to, to, to measure biomechanical uh, um, um, relationship uh, interaction with the, with the project, with the, um, with the refrigerator. Then, as you can see here, we made all the process. And the end of this process, the evaluation, the final evaluation of the process, give us, a, we can say, good result from the ergonomics point of view. Then, sorry because it's in Italian, but uh, I will explain you very briefly. The process, the, the inter process was organized in, in two phases. And the first phase was with the prototype without the, um, the final, the final um, um, statics, then it was uh, a, a, a primary prototype. And then the, the final phase, the second phase of the, of the research was the with the finished prototype. Then it was, uh, we, we, we done a quantitative and qualitative uh, uh, research related with uh, uh, 20, per, uh, 20 users interacting, uh, doing a certain uh, task. We asked them to um, put a, a bottle of water in the, in the door or take out from inside a volume could be, could, that represent, uh, I don't know, eggs or butter or something. And then we decide nine tasks, and we ask them to make three repetitions for each task and collect all this data with the um, optoelectronics uh, technology. At the end, we ask them in, uh, with an interview to give us uh, some opinions about the, the, the experience and so on. I show in this because I want to point in this number here. The result was an uh, algorithm, algorithm uh, developed by my colleagues. And the result show us that our, our uh, proposal, let show you the part of, of the um, biomechanical uh, test, then this is our proposal, and this is the best seller product of the company. The most, uh, the most uh, successful, let's say, product of the company. It's quite obvious that it's difficult to arrive to the highest part, and uh, it is easier to arrive, for example, for people in wheelchair or people with uh, uh, difficult to, um, with um, uh, some motor, um, motor uh, problems. Then, at the end of this research, of this phase of the research, we can see here, as I said before, these two scores that show us that the same prototype, without finishing and with finishing, give us two different scores, total score. Then we can assume that the definition of the presentation, the, 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 let's say the aesthetic part of the prototype, could influence the result of the interaction with the, pro with the, project, with the product. But what I really want to explain you about this is that this was a very interesting project for me, but the, on the other hand, was the demonstration that this project, this uh, procedure is not, is not real. It's just to collect, let's say, numbers. Uh, Dinesh today um, talked about this also. My colleagues say to me, we can't compare movement if they don't do the same movement. And I say, okay, but this movement is not natural, is not real. Then you are measuring something that is not real. The final result of this would be something that probably is not useful from the, the, from the company point of view. The 
Another, another point I want to tell you is, at the end, we pay, the company pay, um, a, a, um, an agency of consultancy to make a focus group about the, the, the um, final result. And we, of course, stay uh, behind the, the mirror, uh, hearing what they answer at the, uh, at the questions, and it was very interesting. Because at the end of, the, of this, um, of this um, test, uh, this focus group, quite everybody said, ah, it's a fantastic idea. Ah, we want uh, this uh, refrigerator. I like very much. But probably we should think about which is the, the validity of this kind of question in this condition, because people is involved to make a, um, a, um, a focus group related with a product, and then they, in some way, are obliged to, uh, uh, they, they should respond, they should demonst uh, support the idea that this is a, a good product. Of course, at the end of the day, this product never arrived to the, to the market, because probably we should ask, who can put this fridge in their own kitchen? How many people? It's a problem of market at the end. It's a problem of, of, uh, of uh, consumers. OK. This is start to ask me, to, to um, push me to, to think about this question here. In my opinion, probably designers are best prepared, or yes, probably best prepared to understand a problem. Because a problem, it's a normally in the real in the real life and, and related with product that, like this, it's a very complex problem. We saw before the example of the high heel shoes. Of course, it's not a problem of biomechanics. Biomechanics is part of the problem. On the other side, you can't, you can't solve a problem if you before don't understand the problem. Let me let give open this question here and go to the next project. This is a professional project. It's not related with research in the university, but uh, with, a, with a company who produce um, um, te uh, safety technology mainly for, for kids. Then they asked me to develop a new walker ride to, for kids. And then, of course, I start to, to look for the market, with, which is the state of the art of this kind of product organize it, and at the end, I propose this project here. I want to point you about the fact that this product should, uh, should be, be part of the development of the kids. In the, in the moment in which kids change and grow very fast, and then the anthropometrical uh, uh, situation is completely changing very fast. Then, of course, this kind of product needs to grow together with the kids. This is why this kind of product is full of regulations that allow to modify the dimensions during the, the, the years. In order to do this, there is a lot of complication from the mechanical point of view. But at the end, the, the result was quite fine. Of course, in all this um, process, the, 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 the final users and the uh, therapist was uh, involved. But there, there was something very interesting in this process. It was related with with the emotional part of the project. We understood, I understood 
in doing this project that this kind of kids, every kid in the, in the, in the, in the world want to have products related with their own um, age. Then, what for parents of, of therapists, are, uh, uh, it's a um, working, uh, worker aid, for them it's a product that help them also to socialize with other, with other kids. Then the idea was to go to see in the market what kind of product near to this uh, could help us to make it better, more acceptable. Then, you can see here uh, some details of uh, small bikes for kids. Then the final idea was to implement some of these uh, strategies to personalize, to personalize these uh, products. Then this was a good, a good uh, result, or a good idea, and in, in the market was very um, uh, happy to this kind of, of uh, strategy in the personalization. Then the company asked me to apply the same logic for all the family of products. Then we start to consider whether uh, colors, uh, relation between materials, and uh, we start to organize all the production and the, um, the combination of colors uh, in order to, to, to have three different lines, uh, male, females, and neutral. neutral. And, uh, well, at the end, this, this uh, small exercise um, was long, three years at least, the most um, give us um, the, um, the result that we can consider only the functional part of the products. We need to consider also all the emotional impact of this kind of product, mainly in this, in this kind of, of uh, field of, of work. One more project. This is, again, a project from the university with the, the team of uh, bioengineers. And uh, in this case, the project was paid by uh, INAIL, which is the, um, the institution who paid the insurance for the, for the um, uh, workers' um, accidents. Then he, here, the, the request was to... Um, try to help them to uh, re, re, uh, mm, take the people and put again to work after some kind of um, critical event, uh, accident or something. Then, in order, especially uh, with the spinal cord uh, accident uh, that um, led them in in a situation of tetraplegy or paraplegy. Uh, then, here again, we start with a user observation, people who use wheelchair during the work, then a, bi a biomechan biomechanical uh, a simulation to uh, measure uh, reachability of the, of the plane of the desk, um, motion capture analysis again, then prototype, and then user test at the end. Then all the process, all the, uh, let's say, um, normal process to, to arrive to a, um, a final product in this field. This is, this is the, the, the final uh, result. But what I um, want to focus in this, in this project is that people told me during interviews that they don't want to have a different product. They want to have the, ne the, the same product that the colleagues in the office. Someone say to me, when I'm working in my office, in my desk, I'm exactly the same of you working in your desk. Then I don't understand why I should have a different desk from you. 
Of course, it's not completely real, but this, uh, this um, sentence <laughs> obliged me to, to think about how it's possible to make something that seems exact, exactly the same of a uh, normal desk, but with some, um, let's say, smart ideas. Then some, just some point here, we have uh, all the plug, power supply plugs here uh, under a, a cover. Uh, you can move uh, the, 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 um, the containers. The, one of the, of the most important problem was the, the printer because they should go to, to take the, the, um, the, the, um, the papers they print. As you can see, it's quite normal. Nothing, nothing very interesting from this point of view. But there is another point that was very interesting to hear from them. They explained me, of course, we know, that as they don't, don't feel the pain, they should change position voluntarily in order to avoid the piaga, um, uh, the the COVID. Um, see, um, insurance. Okay, injuries in the um, because because you know the the pressure in the in the in the same places for all the day. Then uh, they voluntarily should move themselves and and change the position. Some of them, after uh, some hours of uh, work, go with the, with the, um, the um, wheelchair and, uh, and take this position on, on the wall in order to change the, the, um, the pressure zones of, the, of, the, of their bodies. Then, at this point, we introduce this small, small idea here. There is a surface here, a sort of carpet, that is possible to control with these buttons here. And you can also play a sort of loop who change the position and the inclination of the, of the wheelchair some degrees continuously and very, very uh, soft. This should solve this problem, or at least help to avoid this problem. Uh, but when we finish our prototype and propose to these uh, people, our, our, our users involved in the process, they said, OK, it's very interesting. We will try. We don't know if which will be the, 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 um, the sensation after hours to move. Uh, we need to have a very long-term uh, test in order to know if it's useful or not. Okay. Of course, the, the, um, the procedure for the long-term start, uh, at the end, finish because uh, money, <laughs> but the prototype working is continued to use in, in our office. But what I learned from this ex experience experience is that we can't consider the process of development like a line. We should consider this process like a continuous process of improvement. You know, you, you normally mm, done during your, your, your work, but probably you don't consider users in the process, probably. And this is what I think we should uh, consider most, more often. Then my idea was, OK, let's start to, to make a prototype from the very beginning in order to allow somebody outside of the team to give us an idea Positive or negative is not, is not, is not uh, a problem. But we need to have 
some opinion from somebody outside of our, of our team. Then, this is what I'm trying to teach to my students. Then, of course, they are, as designers, able to develop concepts and, and design products. Now, uh, they are starting to, 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 to make much better prototypes. And we will talk about uh, this after. But the, the main goal of this process here is to reach the acceptability of the project, of the product. Because I saw many projects, and you know probably, in which the final result is technically perfect, but nobody wants to use it, and never will arrive to the market. Can I ask you, who of you are in a phase of the development of your research near to the market or considering to release in the market your work? Okay. Okay. 20% of the, of the platea. Okay. Mainly for you. I would like to show you this slide here. Then, we know that technology changed very fast, very, very fast. People don't, don't, don't follow with the same velocity. Then we have the problem of the, of the business. How is it possible to change some business model to allow people to arrive to this technology? And then, at the end, in the healthcare sector, many times it's related with political issues, which is lower, um, slower than, than, than the other issues, the other, the other um, parameters. Then, let's talk about some interesting cases in which the, the, the um, introduction to the market was uh, successful. For example, glasses. We know start like assistive technology for people who can't see very well. And today, glasses are fashion accessories. Then probably we have uh, three different pairs of glasses to change according with, the, with our dresses. Or we can buy also glasses without need to have glasses. Then what's happened if we can consider assistive technologies like an accessory of ourselves? Of course, for these glasses here, or any kind of fashion glasses. Who designed these glasses here is not the uh, specialist in optics or something. It's the marketing, okay? It's the designer. During my, my um, experience with Enel, the, the guys from the, the desk, they have, in the middle of Italy, in Budrio, a very well-known um, um, institution that um, produce and uh, personalize um, prosthetics and uh, any kind of uh, assistive technologies. Actually, they pay us to do the, the, the project before. But one time I visit them, the first time I visit them, I saw a very good uh, pictures uh, exposition, exhibition of um, hand prothes uh, prothesis. Uh, and I asked, I, I said to a person who showed me the, the exhibition, uh, oh, it's incredible the, the, uh, the level of development of the technology for the functional, 
for the functional prothesis. And he say, yes, but people prefer this. This was five years ago or six years ago. Then he said, we, we, we can't in some cases understand why, but people prefer this kind of prosthesis, only static prosthesis, without any functionality, rather than this kind of prosthesis, which are uh, have a big impact in the social relationship with other people. I want to show you this. Let's try to show you uh, a video. Very. No. I can do it. Don't worry. Okay. Okay. <laughs> it's because I don't see here. But, uh, but the problem is. Okay. Okay, let me show you some, some seconds of this video here. Do we have uh, sound? Ah, yes, yes, yes. I kind of knew I wanted to always model, even when I was a kid. Um, I, I played dress up, I always put on makeup, I would make up fake photo shoots. I was just a ham for the camera, so. I just knew that was something that I kind of wanted to do. And I remember my mom would take me to New York City. And I just remember the casting director saying, there's no chance that you'll ever have a career in this industry. I mean, you're technically handicapped. That was really hard for you know a 13-year-old to kind of take in. And so I kind of gave up after that. It wasn't until you know, I was 22 or 23 that I decided that maybe I should give it another shot. And having the prosthetic hand has made a world of difference. You know, people notice me now, people recognize me, and it's just skyrocketed now. Okay, I think it's enough. As you can hear in this video, she's a um, model. And uh, she talked about not about uh, functional uh, problems with the, with the hand. But she talked about the social impact of her prosthesis. But at the end, he say, uh, she said, these prosthesis make me different from the rest of the models. And then this uh, pushed me up. In, the, in my career. Then, what if we can consider prosthesis like a, something who make us different of the others? You know, probably you know, in the market, one of the most important things is differentiation from the from the, um, um, from the others in the same market. Then, if a technology, uh, assistive technology could become a differentiation uh, point for us, probably we can accept better this kind of technologies. But of course, we should design prosthesis in the right way. This is the prosthesis she used. It's the same uh, presented uh, during the talk in the, in the morning. And uh, what I'm interested in show you now, it's about personalization of prosthesis. You can see here the work of uh, Scott Summit, which is a product designer, who start to design and to offer ways to personalize the aesthetic side of the prosthesis. Then, 
what happens if we can give people the possibility to change the aesthetics of their prothesis? Look at this example here. This is a Disney, uh, there's a, a, the participation of Disney here, giving to Open Bionics the possibility to use the image of Iron Man, Frozen, and Star Wars to do prothesis for kids with the, with the um, mood or aesthetics of these well-known well -known, um, films. Okay, this, of course, have a big problem from the market side, production side. You know, a prosthesis, a very good prosthesis, cost, it costs 10,000 euros, 5,000 euros, depending on the capability. Okay, but we need to consider also that for, mainly for industrial design, we are entering in a new particular situation. You know, it was many uh, steps in the, in the industry evolution. At this moment, we are talking about industrial, uh, indust industry 4.0, which is the, the, um, the, the, the actual revolution about the um, production process. But there is also the small and background revolution, which is the maker's revolution. People who can produce by themselves, thanks to some new technologies, all the, the, the branch of the machineries, CNC machineries, uh, in a, a desktop um, dimensions, not for the industry, of course, CNC is very well-known um, uh, technology, but now we have the possibility to buy for, for us in, in, in our small office a 3D printer. Of course, it's not an industrial 3D printer, but we can start to work with this kind of technology. Then what's happening here is that the, the industrial um, process was changed, completely changed. Because if we consider, for example, this uh, plastic duct, we have, according with Anderson in, in, the, in their uh, book, it's very interesting, if you don't, uh, didn't read yet, it's very interesting. We have two ways to produce a, a, a duct, which is with a injection molding, plastic injection molding, like uh, until now, like this is not in injected, but it's not plastic in any case. But <laughs> this, this piece here, it's uh, produced by index injection molding, in which you need to make a very big investment for the first piece, and then after, you should sell and produce millions of pieces, and then the pieces start to to um, cost less and less and less. On the other hand, you have the possibility to produce one of these with a 3D printer, which, is, which costs much more than the, the final result of an uh, injection molding. But at the beginning, if you need to produce one or two or ten pieces, it's much more convenient. Then, what happens if we apply this logic with this, um, if we consider this situation to, uh, to assist the technology? Because the problem of disability is, as you know, each people is, di is different. Also, if, uh, if, if it's the same um, classification of disability, it's completely different from the other. Then we need a specific personalization or customization of the, of the technology. I will go faster. 
This is the Esting project, probably you know, it's a European project who um, um, organize all the technologies, the assisted technologies on the market. And uh, this is the, the Italian side. Uh, actually, this is all the, one of the products I showed you at the beginning. But at the same time, we have a lot of products that have been uh, designed and produced by people. Do-it-yourself solutions. Then probably you know uh, Instructables. And in Instructables, you have a, a section related with, with, the, with the assistive technologies. And you can find there a lot of um, projects related with the assistive technologies. Project made by normal people. This is a very well-known example of one of these projects. It's the RoboHand uh, project that today has become an enabled project. And you can see here the tree of contribution all around the world, in which people download the, the files and improve, improve the project and, uh, and uh, upload again. Then, let me enter very fast here. In this condition, I start to uh, teach to my student that this kind of products are combined by a front end and a back end side of each product, and the other end, software and hardware. Then normally designers are located here. Uh, mechanical and electronic engineers are located here. Computer scientists, uh, graphical designers in the interfaces. Okay, in my opinion, this classification should change completely. We need to start to consider all the complexity together. In order to do this, we need to work together. And we need to know what the other people can offer to the final product, to the final uh, project. Then, on the other hand, I explain them that we are potentially uh, mm, handicapped people uh, by normal evolution of our uh, body. And I start to uh, teach them how to produce this kind of product. Then I will show you very fast, just in order to give you an idea, to the project that my, my students are doing now. Um, of course, uh, you can see here one, uh, one um, principal point of this project is must, should be, must be related with a specific person. You should have a, a user in order to, to involve in the product. Then this is a, a girl who, who has a, a prosthesis, and then, I, then, then they are uh, designing a, a new prosthesis considering um, a new, a new uh, potential, potentialities and, and mainly considering aesthetics. This is an interesting, um, an interesting project that I want to, to show you because um, today in the morning uh, our colleagues uh, talk about freezing of gate. And uh, in this case, um, we have a, um, a stick connected by Bluetooth to the mobile phone because the problem of this person here, uh, he's uh, George, I, I don't remember the name, this person here has the problem that he starts to walk and when he receives a call, as um, Dinesh said in the, in the morning, he gets blocked first uh, in the gate to, to answer, and then he has the problem to start to work again. Then they are uh, producing a, a stick who can um, give you the possibility to answer directly from the stick, and after give you feedback, uh, haptic feedbacks, to give you the rhythm again to, to start to, to work. Okay, this is a, a, a project in which it's involved um, Andrea, which is a guy with uh, autism disorder, and uh, who has, a, of course, problem 
to relation with other people, and then they are they are helping them to give some kind of feedback about the mood. Um, okay, this is a, a thesis project uh, related with a company, an Italian company. Um, in which the the student uh, develop again the the gloves, giving the possibility to uh, dress easily the glove, uh, and uh, giving new possibilities to to um, to have a, um, active and, and passive uh, rehabilitation during the the process. This project was uh, in, the, in the in the newspapers, and. Uh, the problem here, and I finish with this two slide, is how to arrive from the research development, in our case, to development and design the product, to the production and the commercialization. And this is another part of the revolution which we are living now. You probably know Kickstarter. And this is the case of another student of mine who made this uh, robot. Is, this is not a robot related with technology with assistive technology, but I cited because the most important thing here is after the thesis, they continue to work together with a, a team, arrive to produce uh, well done prototypes and uh, won some awards, and then they participate to a Kickstarter project. Who of you can uh, know Kickstarter? Okay, fine. Then, they ask for 90,000 euros. Uh, they achieve 1 million euros with this project. Then, this show us that at this point, designers could arrive until the end of the process, until the market with a product, without the limitation of the industry. It means I can arrive to an industry to ask to produce this after have the uh, knowledge about the uh, acceptance of the users. Then, I will, I will finish now. I will jump some slides. But I know you want to know the answer of the first, of the first question. And then I, I, I will jump. OK? Then, there are tons of research related with the biomechanical of the, of the high hills. But I found. Some days ago, this research from the November 2017 was plain from the psychological point of view why girls use high heels. Then they perform, you, you can uh, search for this paper, it's very interesting, but I will point two things. They perform uh, a test with users in which um, show them a uh, certain quantity of pictures, dressing and undressing high heels, and ask them about who of these two pictures was more attractive. Of course, this picture here won because it was uh, decided as much more attractive. Then they explain that the, the, the Point is in the, lower, the lumbar curvature, then here. This curve here explains us why people spend all this money. Of course, we can imagine this uh, result, but they perform a scientific study to demonstrate this. Then the final advice, and I close, is do not underestimate curves and do not underestimate design for your projects. Thank you very much. <laughs>